Nonviolence, Section, King's Radical Turn and Assassination. We have seen King make an effort to understand the problems raised by black power, despite disagreeing with it. In these years, the African-American leader's thinking underwent comprehensive radicalization. The concept of violence tended to expand. Segregation, racial discrimination, and the violence implicit in them were not only manifested at a legal level. It was also necessary to achieve, quote, the elimination of de facto school segregation, the wiping out of housing and job discrimination, end quote. Violence could also nestle in social relations as such. Hence, the warning against, quote, the violence of poverty and humiliation, that is, against the daily violence that our society inflicts upon many of its members, against the continuous violence implicit in the extreme polarization of wealth and poverty. At this level, little or nothing had changed in the century since the Lincoln presidency and the abolition of slavery. Quote, 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. End quote. Blacks were in fact forced to live in ghettos where exploitation and repression persisted. And all this was not confined to the south of the country. Quote, the northern ghetto daily victimizes its inhabitants. End quote. In addition, the further the Vietnam War escalated, the more self evident became the relationship between the violence unleashed in Asia and the violence that continued to variously impact on blacks in the United States. Expansion of the military budget occurred at the expense of the social expenditure required to remedy the appalling condition of blacks denounced in the speech of August 1963. In other words, the escalation of military violence in Vietnam rendered ever more problematic the prospect of an end to the violence contained in the social relations that condemned African Americans to unemployment, or relegated them to the bottom segments of the labor market or consigned them to pack prisons and death row. In the last months of his life, King repeatedly drew attention to the intertwining of these two types of violence, ignoring appeals for caution from some of his collaborators. Quote, It's inevitable that we've got to bring out the question of the tragic mix-up in priorities. We're spending all of this money for death and destruction, and not nearly enough money for life and constructive development. When the guns of war become a national obsession, social needs inevitably suffer. End quote. And again, quote, the movement must address itself to restructuring the whole of American society. The problems that we are dealing with are not going to be solved until there is a radical redistribution of economic and political power. End quote. The war in Vietnam frustrated any attempt to construct a welfare state, and hence, quote, I was increasingly compelled to see the war as an enemy of the poor and to attack it as such, end quote. Such denunciation proved all the more imperative because the war in Asia involved an especially high number of casualties among the African Americans whom it condemned to poverty at home. Beginning of long quote. It was sending their sons and their brothers and their husbands to fight and to die in extraordinarily high proportions relative to the rest of the population. We were taking the black young men who had been crippled by our society and sending them 8,000 miles away to guarantee liberties in Southeast Asia, which they had not found in Southwest Georgia and East Harlem. End quote. In this context, we can well understand the tribute King paid shortly before his death to William E.B. Du Bois, the great African-American intellectual who, on the basis of his anti-racist and anti-colonialist engagement, became a communist. Quote, History cannot ignore W.E.B. Du Bois. We cannot talk of Dr. Du Bois without recognizing that he was a communist in his later years. 
it is time to stop muting the fact that Dr. Du Bois was a genius that chose to be a communist. End quote. King's commitment to nonviolence remained firm, and yet to the dominant class and ideology, the radicalism of these positions sounded like a declaration of war. In any event, J. Edgar Hoover's FBI had not waited for King's radical turn before spying on him, tailing him, discrediting him, persecuting him, frightening him with a false fire alarm in an attempt to debilitate him, even inviting him to commit suicide in an anonymous letter. Quote, Edgar's effort to ruin King was in high gear in the spring of 1964. End quote from Anthony Summers. The further the process of radicalization went, the more the African-American leader was conscious of the dangers confronting him. Here he is underscoring in a speech of the 5th of November, 1967, the need for those fighting for a noble cause to risk death. Beginning a long quote. I say to you this morning that if you have never found something so dear and so precious to you that you will die for it, then you aren't fit to live. You may be 38 years old, as I happen to be, and one day some great opportunity stands before you and calls upon you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great cause, and you refuse to do it because you are afraid. You refuse to do it because you want to live longer. You died when you refused to stand up for right. End quote. King was well aware that a vacuum was being created around him, and that it made the danger threatening him even more serious. This is what emerges from an intervention of March 1968, beginning of long quote. Having to live under the threat of death every day, sometimes I feel discouraged. Having to take so much abuse and criticism, sometimes from my own people, sometimes I feel discouraged. Having to go to bed so often frustrated with the chilly winds of adversity about to stagger me, sometimes I feel discouraged and feel my works in vain. End quote. A month later, the black leader was assassinated. Quote, Even if Edgar and the FBI had no part in the actual crime, they must surely bear some of the blame. End quote. We can thus endorse the judgment formulated in 1975 by Walter Mondale, former U.S. Vice President. Quote, the way Martin Luther King was hounded and harassed is a disgrace to every American. End quote. On a larger scale, repression rained down on black power and African American radicalism. End section.